Okay, right, so let's see how we can solve another question from the third chapter of the Injury Mechanics by Miriam. And in this one, we know when the 0 0.05 kilogram body is in the position shown, the linear spring is the stretch 10 millimeters. So we have the displacement of the spring and it's a stretch. So it is in tension and we need to determine the force P required to break contact at point C and the question is asking us to complete solutions for A including the effect of the weight and the B part we can neglect the weight. So we're going to start with the free body diagram of the beam and all the supports that are applying forces into that. So we have the force P at A for point O we're going to consider both x and y component if we just show our x and y in here and we're gonna have a normal force at c we won't consider any friction between the support and the, the body that we have in this question and also the question is saying that the required p has to break the contact at point c so we're gonna consider the zero force at point c but we know that we obviously have a normal force that has to be zero and since we know that this spring in here is in tension and obviously this force is from the body to the spring so the force that the spring is applying to the body would be in the opposite direction based on newton's law so this force would be in this direction we can call it with fs which is the force in the spring and we know that that force would be equal to the constant of the spring times the displacement which in the question we know that it's 10 millimeters so we should be able to find a force in the spring so we have the k in the question 750 newton per meter times displacement is 10 millimeter or 0 0.01 meter so that's going to give us the force in newton which is going to be 17.5 newtons and obviously we are in equilibrium we're going to use our equilibrium equations. We're going to have three different equations. Sum of all forces in X equals zero. Same for the forces in Y. And for moment two, since we have two unknowns at point O that we don't need to consider. One thing that we forgot in the A part of the question, we need to consider the weight. So let's just show the weight. It is something like this. And we know the weight would be mass times acceleration of gravity and g would be 9.81 meter per square second on earth so the weight would be basically 0 0.05 times 9.81 that's going to give us the force in newtons and we also have the mass in the question so if we start with the moment about point o uh, for the a part where we need to consider the weight the force p which about o is a counterclockwise moment so p times the vertical distance to the line of action that's going to be 60 plus 60, 120. Uh, we can do the unit conversion in here, but even if we don't, uh, we're going to get the same answer. Uh, I'm going to explain later. So we're going to have the moment of the weight. This one's also counterclockwise, so plus 0 0.05 times 9.81. Vertical distance to the line of action this time is 60, so this would be our distance. And the last one would be the moment of the spring, which is going to be clockwise, so negative 17.5 was the force. And again, we're going to go with the vertical distance to the line of action, which is 40. And that's pretty much everything. And the reason I didn't do the unit conversion for millimeters, just we have to divide each of these by 1000, which if we multiply 1000 to this equation, we're going to get what we have at the first place. So our force P in here would be basically 17.5 times 40 minus 0 0.05 times 9.81 times 60 and all divided by 120. Let's see what we get. So 17.5 times 40 minus 0 0.5 times 9.81 times 60 all divided by 120. And this is going to give us 5.50 9 newton as for the answer for the a part and for the b part uh everything will be the same uh we're just gonna miss this part uh because we won't have the moment of the weight because the question is asking us to neglect the effect of weight so basically our p in here would be 17.5 times 40 divided by 120 or we just have to divide 
17.5 by 3. That's going to give us 5.83 newtons. And this is going to be the answer for the B part of the question. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions and you guys take care. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.